This is the fundamentals of gospel music for total, total, absolute beginners. I assure you, if you are here, you don't have to have any experience playing gospel music. Now, JP, Jonathan Powell, he's playing some really nice chords here, but don't be intimidated, be encouraged, be inspired that through this resource, the Gospel Music Training Center, you can get to uh, this level. We're going to take it all the way back to notes and scales and chords and progressions. So you are in the right place. Uh, Hear and Play was started uh, August 6th, the year 2000. Long, long, long time ago. Gospel Music Training Center would come along uh, 2008 and ever since. We've been helping students all around the world. Uh, JP, Mr. Director of the Gospel Music Training Center, what are we going to show the people today? Well, we're going to go through all the basics and fundamentals for those of you who are beginners, from the notes to the chords to the scales, all the tools that you need to play gospel music and do it fast. That's one thing that we've done. We've created a unique way and a unique approach because we've learned through the School of Hard Knocks how to play this piano. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So if you, how do you know you're in the right place? Well, you've been going to church, you've been sitting in the pews, but you got this yearning. You look to the band and you're like, I want to do that one day. Or maybe you even bought yourself a keyboard, but you just like really don't know where to start. There's so much information online. Uh I mean, there's a million YouTube videos, but you don't know the right order. Like, right. who do I start with? Who do I listen to? Mm-hmm. Well, there is a resource, the number one platform number for one. gospel musicians, mm-hmm. the longest standing platform. Right. August 6th, the year 2000, this company got started. And so you're in the, the right hands. Right. This is the right way to get started. And it starts like this. Notes create scales. Scales create chords. Chords create patterns, Mm -hmm. and patterns create songs. That's like how it works. So when it comes to notes, like the piano is this big thing, Mm -hmm. but it's only two two kind, black notes and white notes. Right. What's the most like, if if I was a beginner and I needed to be able to identify notes easily, Mm -hmm. what would you say like the most universal note is? Well, the the most universal note is C. Mm -hmm. It's easy to find because... You have sets of black keys. Mm -hmm. Um, You have a set of two, and then you have a set of three, right? And that's a pattern that you should recognize instantly when you look at the piano. You mean never four? Never four. Never one. Never one. Just two and three. Just two and three. Uh, Two. Michael Jordan. Just remember 23. That's a great Are you a Jordan fan? Um, I, I like Jordan's <laughs> shoes. I'm a Kobe fan, but I didn't get to oh, see I thought Jordan. you were a LeBron fan. Oh, no, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, two, so you're saying it doesn't matter where you are on the piano. Except right. Actually, they trick you down here, but that's really the third note. Man, you just you don't usually, see it. You rarely play that. You man. rarely play that. So if yeah. you're just looking here, it's like two, three, mm-hmm. two, three. Two, three, two, Michael Jordan. Three, two, three. Yep. So all they got to remember is Michael Jordan. Yep. Or I guess they can remember Magic Johnson. Or they can remember be, LeBron James because LeBron James three, has 23. You said you don't, you don't like LeBron. I, huh? I mean, I got to <laughs> respect him. He's great. So, so three, two. Three, two. Time, we could start with three, two. That's, that's Magic Johnson. Yeah. Magic Johnson, three, two. That all works. So C is mm-hmm. always to the left. Of the of, two black keys. Right. And then how I remember the left of the three black keys is F. Right. So C, F, C, F. So if I was telling my kids, okay, if C is always to the left of the two black keys, don't disappoint me, beginners. (laughs) I know you beginners, but you're not that beginner. C is to the left. So where would it be over here? Just somebody guess for me. Where would it be? Bam, right there. Where would it be in this round? Let's take a wild guess. Like Vanna White. Boom. There it is. Boom. Very easy to find. Yep. Where, where would it be right here? See, in this round, where would it be right here? And then it just follows the alphabet, really. So you got the first, what, seven notes of the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. E, F, G. That's seven. It starts all over, right? There's no H. No H. So after you get to uh, G, oh, wait. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I a, think B, about it. C, D, it's tricky. E, it's F, tricky. G. Yeah. After yeah. you get to G, then it starts at A all over again. All over again. Mm-hmm. There's no H. Like, you never heard Shirley Caesar say, take me to H flat. Like, that, <laughs> you, even if you're not a musician, you, you've never heard H flat, I flat, no such thing. K flat, K sharp. Right. Music only goes the first seven letters of the English alphabet, right? Exactly. So mm-hmm. let's put that with our whole theory of C being to the left. 
just, just take a wild guess. Like if you're doing your ABCs, I got young kids. Right? What comes after C in alphabet? D. Mm -hmm. So that means D is the next white key. Mm -hmm. What comes after D in the alphabet? Y'all take a wild, wild guess. E. All right. And then I always already said F. F is the key uh, uh, to the left of the three black keys. Right. So now you're back to F. So you already got your like C, F. Mm -hmm. You know that what's in between them is what's in between them in the alphabet. All right. C, D, E, F. There's the G. Mm -hmm. And then what did JP say? There's no H. So if you find yourself, this is H and L M N O P. Nope, nope. After G, always in the alphabet, you start all over. And now you got your A, B, C. What can somebody do to just kind of get those notes in their system? Because first, I mean, you got to have recognition of the notes. Right. Um, there's different things that you could do um, as far as exercises. Um, one thing I would do is just get used to finding those for those C's that are all over the piano. So just say C mm -hmm. and then go up here. Just mix it up till you get familiar with where the notes are mm -hmm. with both hands. And once you start to visualize where the C is and everything else, I mean, it's just like you said, a matter of knowing the alphabet. But one thing that gets tricky for sometimes for some people is like the, the point where it starts all over when it gets to G. Like how it tricked me a little bit. I, like, I had to think about it. But <laughs> once it gets to G, just always know that it's going to A next. So really focus on remembering that the A is coming after G. So G A for Georgia. You can use G A as the abbreviation for Georgia. Or right. What else can you think of for like for like that? General audience, general admission. Right. <laughs> I mean, you sitting way up there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, so, but think of G as like Z. Z, you know, if you're starting all over in the alphabet, Z is like at the end, and, mm -hmm. and you'd be like, now I know my A, B, C's. You're right. like back to the beginning. So just kind of get that, you know, in your system, just kind of visualize it. I know when I close my eyes, I can picture a piano, and all I got to do is, is picture those two black keys, those three black keys. You mm -hmm. can also remember, well, Michael Jordan is 2-3, and he played for the Chicago Bulls, C. Mm -hmm. So C, two, three, like C and two, right? And uh, so you can think of it like that. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that'd be the beginning of it. So once you kind of got your notes down, right. you can, you know what I did when I was younger? I took uh, some scotch tape mm -hmm. and I put it on the keys. And then I took just like a marker and I just kind of put C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, maybe some classical people. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they might frown upon that, but we're not classical. We're by ear. Right. So we have a lot of unorthodox things. I mean, write on your keyboard if you have to. Mm -hmm. But get it in your system, and then at some point, you'll be able to take them off, and you'll just know the notes, right? Right. I mean, repetition is the mother of skill, so it's important that you really just focus in on doing this over and over and to the point where you don't have to really think about it. Mm -hmm. So like Jermaine said, even... Though you put stickers on it, but press the note and say the note. You know, get it in your mental uh, side of things. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Mm -hmm. C, just do it over. E, F, G. And then sometimes start at a different point. Maybe uh, start from the F and then keep going. So you know that the F is on the left side of the three black keys. So right. maybe start from F. F. G, it might take a little bit of time for you to really think about this. You mm -hmm. might have to say F, then think G. You know, you might not have to be able to do it fast, but the key thing is to just do it like Nike because the more and more you do it, the more familiar you're going to get with the notes. And it'll happen pretty fast, watch. Right. And then every piano has what we call a middle C. It's like, mm -hmm. it's kind of where you sit. It's sort of the middle of the piano. Mm -hmm. The only thing is it, it sort of moves around depending on how big your keyboard. So right. this is an 88 key keyboard, which is the same as sitting down at a real like piano. Mm -hmm. And the C is typically four from the bottom. So that's the first C. That kind of trains us. So now we look mm -hmm. for the next C. There's the second, there's the third, and there's our middle C. Right. Now, if you're playing a smaller keyboard, then it'll be typically three from the bottom because the keyboard, is, it might be 62 keys, 61, might be 70s, 76. 61 and 76. Yeah. So you'll know, though, it makes the same sound regardless of what piano you're on. Mm -hmm. And then also notice the shapes. Some of these shapes, look at the Y key. Mm -hmm. It's an L. That's how you know you're talking about a C or F. Right. 
And those are going to be your important ones. L's, L's. So C and F's, they, they make an L shape. Look at your D. It's kind of like an upside down T. Uh -huh. The G and the A also have the upside down T, right? And then look at the E, the E and the B. It's kind of like an inverted L, like a backwards L. So the E and the B, right? Think of like the L going the other direction like that. And then I think that covers everything. Uh -huh. And then down here is the only one you get like an I. Right. And that's about it. So sometimes the shapes can help you out as well.